no brand names here. Aldi's good enough for me. Goes in one end, out the other anyway, don't it? Here's a memory for you, while I'm looking at the uh, housework I've got to do when I get back from doing my shopping without having any fucking incidents, because I'm not having it. Stuff's got to go out. <sighs> Bin's got to be emptied. I could improvise like my old mill wall buddies used to do for travelling across London on the bus while I was looking in the reflection of the windows with rival supporters on the same bus behind them. They'd have one of them in their pocket filled full of oven cleaner just to squirt neck height so the fumes would blind and distract so they could get away or stand and fight whatever the case may be so there has been a I'm sorry about the breathing here there's been a massive recall on dog food lately from sunshine mills sunshine mills makes a lot of different brands of dog food and uh the fda has recalled a a, a large number they've actually increased the lot sizes in the last few days and the reason why they've increased, or what the reason why they've done this recall, is because there's a toxin in the foods called the aflatoxin. That's that's a very very important um, thing I, 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 as part of something that we've been talking about on this channel. It's something that I mentioned a little while ago. Is uh, this particular ingredient that's causing this problem? Is uh, this isn't necessarily a, an issue with the manufacturer, but it's an issue with the grain ex itself. So let me explain. Aflatoxin is a toxin produced by mold. She's got a tin of meat, uh, so she's all right at the moment. Grains. And if you look at uh, this And I've noticed brands, mold. They make things like the sport dog brand and things like that. On the dog um, food that I buy in a sack before. So this man now, is telling the truth. I don't that type of food because I don't think that dogs should be eating a lot of corn. They should have some grains. Uh, they shouldn't be completely, you know, meat diet. But they should also, they should have a pretty balanced diet. And, and I can personally vouch for what this man's trying to tell you. Are very corn based. I've seen but, it myself. Uh, anyway, they, they have this toxin in them called the aflatoxin that is created by uh, mold in the grains. And so that is what <clears> has, <throat> has caused this recall, ultimately. The, the problem with the grains is actually a bigger problem than what I think that they're letting on to because I have done several videos on this already this year, but the grains themselves have been low quality. Earlier in the year, we saw some reports coming out that there was an increase in grain bin accidents here in the United States because of the quality of corn that we harvested in 2019. We all know that 2019 was a tough year for corn. Now, the big thing in 2019 was that we had the late season harvest. And so a lot of that corn that was harvested... Can we the cockerel crowing in the background? ...before we started having freezes. There was a higher moisture content in the corn, and that corn eventually got harvested. We ran out of propane. It was a mess. And so we couldn't dry the corn properly, and eventually that corn made it into the bins. Bit and, of grain, ain't and, it? Uh, the, Brown bread. The early spring, we started seeing an increase in grain bin accidents because of the corn quality that was in the bins. And I had mentioned last year that I felt that farmers should take the bad corn and sell that first and keep the good corn because I felt like we were going to have a corn quality issue late in the marketing period, in which case we would start to see a similar so basically sell us the shit. 
and keep what's good for themselves in America. Pay more money for high quality corn and less money for low quality corn. And I think that's where we're heading now. But with the recommendations, it's a bit like the songs, isn't it? Feed the world. We are the world. Toxin that's in the corn and dilute it. But I think that's causing a bigger problem now, especially as we've gotten later into the season and the, the mold spores within the corn have had a chance to grow. Now we're seeing aflatoxin and all sorts of animal feeds. Um, the other problem with low quality corn is that it takes a substantial amount more of corn to produce things like starches, things like gasoline. So our usage of corn is going up because we need a higher volume of that corn. Corn also make makes what? That we like to make off of it. Luckily, you know, Alcohol. Year, we've seen a decrease in the overall production of ethanol, so that has helped offset it. But believe me, if the ethanol production was whiskey even at levels in particular, in 2018, we'd be seeing a much larger. Good afternoon, Mr. Now. Magpie. The corn shortage or not, right. the corn well, is we got bad. two of them today. He's brought his missus as well. See. I opened up a bag several weeks ago, several bags that came off of a pallet of corn feed for livestock, and again. You know, just looking at the corn, it was moist, it was moldy, it had the aflatoxin in it. I don't feed it to my animals. What it does is it actually creates liver damage in the animals. So your animal will start to lose its appetite, it'll start to become lethargic, lazy. You may see yellowing of the eyes, yellowing of the gums. Um, some animals show no symptoms of liver damage at all, and they just simply die. Uh, if, especially if you're raising cattle, hogs, like chickens, snatch. whatever it is that you're raising. You have a hard enough time putting weight on those animals as it is. The last thing you need is to be dealing with... A lot with of combining factors all making sense death. now, ain't so it? that's an investment that you make. And then, of course, with our home pets, you know, we definitely don't want to see Fluffy getting ill. So um, that is something that we should all be well aware Weed of. Weed killer, and when we look poisoned at the food. situation with this corn quality and the lack of corn, um, we are far behind where they are in China right now. China is... At a different phase than we are with the All corn starting crop. to make sense now, so ain't it? China, what we have Not so mad after all, am I? A family of nine people die from eating corn noodles. Now, this Even though the neighbour had been going around planting seeds, telling everybody who would listen to him, he's mad, there's some, something wrong with him, don't listen to him, because he was trying to cover up the crime and trying to kill me by making me appear mad. As we know from looking at the statistics of this table, 9 out of 11 people have passed away. All 11 got ill What from a sad little Rupert. The, the poisoning. Aye. And this poisoning is caused from mold being fermented with the grains or being soaked with the corn. So China actually Where is Murdoch now hiding anything that is uh, corn based and in the US, or isn't fermented he? grains. So they know that this is a problem over there in China. If you remember in August, we started seeing some... Oh, some moldy Chinese corn. I've got it now. China's corn stocks right, well. were moldy and rotted. And uh, China has since then tried to pick up a propaganda campaign to... You know, he had my attention. I could confirm what he was saying. But as soon as the demonising began... That's the end of my attention. So let's listen to uh, an Irishman. Oh yes, I don't know what happened there with the previous video. I just want to start this one by reading something to you first. Because Ireland's also under attack from American-based technology. After Cyril Irish people asked for help, affair. saying that Trump in, was the coming for them. The day he, that he met him, he was the younger brother of the Duke of Flint, his race probably Norman in the main, but he gave the impression of a Roman emperor. Haughtiness was here, and great good nature. The intellect was evidently developed to the highest possible pitch of which man is capable. Mm -hmm. And one could read the judicial habit on his deep white brows. Against this, one could see the huge force of the man's soul, the passionate desire for knowledge, which bored into his that great brain. One could conceive him capable of monstrous deeds, for he would let no man, no prejudice of men, stand in his way. He would certainly have fiddled while Rome was boring, if it had been his hobby to play the violin. 
The man was the mainstay of the Society of Psychical Research. He was the only absolutely competent man in it, perhaps. At least he stood well above all the others. He had the capacity for measuring the limits of error in any investigation with great accuracy, just as the skillful climber can make his way on rotten chalk by trusting each crumbling fragment with just that friction of his weight which will not quite dislodge it. So, Lord Anthony could prepare a sound case for worthless testimony. He knew the limits of fraud. He might catch a median in the act of cheating a dozen times in the seance and yet record some of the phenomena of the seance as evidental. He used to say that the fact of a medium having his hands free did not explain the earthquake at Menina. <coughs> now, that was from Moonchild by Alistair Crowley. And uh, the, the Lord is a man who's blinded by integrity. Now, what I mean by that is that he's so devoted to debunking the mediums or any kind of paranormal investigation that even when he sees something negative happen, like the earthquake, like this, what happened in, in Messina, in Sicily, in the rest of the book, part of the book, it's still not real. And why I read that passage and brought that character to the fore is because this is what we're surrounded by at the moment. As we now enter into uh, the basically a, a second lockdown here in Ireland, from midnight tonight, apparently the virus doesn't it doesn't wake up until midnight. But from midnight tonight until Christmas, ostensibly the country is shut down in many ways. Only the essentials are in open and I can't travel any more than five kilometers now. So it's just like it was in April. Not as, maybe as harsh, but close enough to it. But the thing is that it's the protracted element. It's so long now. It's, it's probably going to go on right till Christmas. And uh, it's depressing. I'd be lying if I said it didn't get me down. I was very down by it yesterday. I'm not too bad today, but yesterday I was very down by the whole thing. And uh, I'm still... All uh, about the mood manipulation, ain't it? I was really down by it. And it's... It's those kinds of men, like Lord Anthony and Moonchild. You can show them all the evidence about Sweden. And, but they're still blinded by the fact that there's a pandemic according to number crunching from Neil Ferguson at University College London. <coughs> they're, they're, they're devoted to a religion of scientism. Um, the, act, the absolute act of fate is this belief that the scientific mathematical models don't lie. And, uh, you know, they're not denying Sweden <laughs> because they're evil or they're bad men or they're... A danger to the rest of us, and they're, they're trying to, you know, make lock us all down out of some dastardly Illuminati plan or something like that. They're blinded by their orthodoxy, they're possessed by it. And the orthodoxy and the possession and the ideology that has possessed them right now is this is there's a pandemic and evidence contrary to the to this global belief, warming, and it's the scientists the actually that doing that the global warming. Approaching. Using artificial is, uh, technology it, it just doesn't exist. to heat it's the not atmosphere. That they deny it. It's not that they are afraid of it. It's not that they're censoring of it. They literally go into Sir the LHC. brains where they switch it off and don't want to hear the alternative. It doesn't exist. It might as well exist in a parallel universe. It doesn't exist in this one. Mm -hmm. And that's not politics. You know, nothing you can do in terms of a political system could ever address that. You cannot deal with that. I mean, this is why politics, as, as, an, as a pagan anarchist, my belief is that government should be only administrative functions and have no political ideology towards any system, Republican democracy, socialism, Marxism, anything. It shouldn't have any of that. It should purely be a, an administrative function. That's right. So why have they given them safe. themselves the power to torture or kill us? Platforms. And then laugh at us That's while they're doing it. Political. Uh, I could be perfectly happy in Ireland if it wasn't a republic. 
uh, once the, 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 the central fabric of the nation and this the culture remains but I wouldn't I mean I don't why do I need a Roman system to, you know <laughs> and where do all roads <laughs> lead to according ago, to the same you know, who gives the, the crown in the UK permission to rule the ideology once the once people are taking care of the country is taken to the safe and it's not overrun by bandits. Now what's happened now in our why we're locked down is an ideological possession that's a line you could literally draw from tonight, midnight, all the way back through the first lockdown, right through the banking bailouts of two thousand and eight, all the way back to the the Lisbon Treaty before that. There's a direct line back to that. And that was what happened. The second Lisbon Treaty in Ireland was the one that broke the Irish. Burn. It wasn't the famine. It wasn't British rule. It wasn't in the past. It wasn't Cromwell. It wasn't the Catholic Church in the 1950s. It was the second Lisbon Treaty vote. We should have told them to get stuffed. But there was enormous propaganda, just like there's enormous propaganda now. And Irish journalists showed their true colours when they were being literally paid and taken on whining and dining and holidays with their families on fact-finding tours to, you know, places like Dennis and stuff like that, all paid for by the EU Commission in order to brainwash us that we'd be, we'd be destroyed out of the EU. It was just not true. I mean, economically, we wouldn't be affected if we left tomorrow because, in fact, the EU are more of a danger to us economically because they want to affect their tax base that has all these big multinational and high-tech companies working here. If the EU had their way, they, they'd... I've got a lot of friends in Ireland, both sides of the border. And all these, all these high tech, comp high tech companies that have made hard. Not on my Facebook well, list. As well as the, uh, but from the past. By bio tech companies, they'd all, they'd be all gone tomorrow, and so we'd actually be economically safer if the EU left. But you can't do that because you have, you have like civil servants who, like I, I was watching the 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 journal about IEA. There's a character on there called Anna Anna. And every single story that the journal that IE <coughs> posts about uh, the corona thing, she's always the first commenter on, and she's always, always quoting government statistics. Now, it's very suspicious. And as a result, just the way the journal works is that there's such morons that what in the comment section that literally the first comment that comes on, if it said like, you know, the colour of my shite is pink with pro polka dots, it'd be the highest rated comment because they just instinctively turn up the there first comment. There you go, now she started eating and on so me. She's always forced in there. <coughs> and I'm very, Anna Anna is the name. And I'm very suspicious that she's either connected to the Department of the HSC or the government or she's a civil servant. <laughs> By the journal, by the IE editors, that there's a story, a controversial <coughs> story on the coronavirus in Ireland that's about to come up, be published on the on the journal that IE, and that's so she can get in there, or she might even be a journalist within the that in the journal that IE itself. Rainy shitty day, so uh, don't need to put on clean clothes, do I? And so uh, mm. it's very suspicious, and no one seems to figure this out yet. Why is a single girl called Anna Anna always the first and highest rated commenter and the first one in simply because she'd been tipped off by the editors um, of the journal and I need to do that? What else do I need? That's the kind of world we're living in now. Okay, that's how. So I'm just that's starting how to get ready for right the day. And, uh, it's going to get all filthy anyway because I'm going to be on the bike. Leggings, thermal leggings, thermal top. Don't need to clean my pants, do I? Because no one's going to be getting in them. And if they do, I can leave them on the floor after having a bath, can't I? Or a shower or whatever first. But that's not my intention when I go out. So. I'm going to have a wash and everything first. Put dirty clothes on because it's only going in the wash when I get back anyway. Along with the bedding. That I couldn't do the other day because I was too exhausted. Right, let's have that off of there as well. Right. Uh, uh, and 
that. I've had me pint of Guinness last night, and very nice it was too. Right, what do I need to take with me today? Still a bit of a sniffly nose, but I've had no heating on today yet. Oh, I forgot to do something, didn't I? While I'm talking out loud. Whackety whack. It's not been done to annoy the neighbour next door, is it? Yeah, that can be done when I get back. See, the whole point was of the Champions League was so the top clubs in each league in Europe wouldn't break away and form a kind of an, an NFL or a World Series type <coughs> across Europe. And so that's where the Champions League big time money was for. Now, that's the UEFA has said they don't have the money they have because of the Super Bowl games and television. People stop watching the TV, the football, the world TV. But they've, the fact is that this, this European elite soccer oh, league, pause it a second. The big boys, no, actually, I'm just going to end it in 22 minutes JP anyway. Morgan, While I get dressed, have a ciggy, so that or have a ciggy you, first, then get dressed. That shows you what have a quick that, wash that under the armpits, spray a bit because of deodorant, soccer and, football has and get ready to uh, go and get my food.